Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is material? The vector to radial value node. I have gone ahead and created a quick little example here. The vector to radial value node, it's a function. It's intended to transform a input uv or a vector, and keep in mind this is a v2, so an x and a y, into an angle, or it transforms it into a radial coordinate set, or a linear distance. Basically, this is a way of usually transforming, as you can see in these pictures, some input texture coordinates, and then using them to give you a nice smooth radial radius, or a angular, angular gradient, as you can see in these images here. So let's go ahead and look at the node itself. If you type in vector to radial value, you'll find under math and miscellaneous, but it is a math node, and it's going to come in like this. We've got two inputs and three outputs. Now, this is a function, which means we can double click on it and we can actually see all of the underlying code behind it. And you'll actually see how it works if you want to know how individual parts of this function. The input nodes are vector or uv, v2. Remember, a uv is an x and a y, or this takes a v2 or a vector 2, an x and a y value, and then a swizzle coordinate output. And this is just a boolean of true or false. Output wise, we have radial coordinates. Basically, this is a set of radial coordinates, which you can see here. A vector, or uv, converted to an angle, which is how we get an angular gradient here. And then linear distance, which is basically going to give us back a circular gradient based on how strong our input is. So let's look at this in action. Now I've gone ahead and I've created, we'll move these over to the side. I've created this setup and we don't need that. I've set it up so we can actually see the different values in use. Yeah, we don't need this one either. Why not? There we go. We'll make it as big as possible. We can zoom in more. There we go. This is a, it's a fairly complicated node. As you can see behind it, it's, it's got a lot of math and not being an artist, this is one of those things where I don't quite understand everything behind it. But I know the uses of it and I know the outputs. These outputs are primarily what you're going to want. You're going to want the angular gradient or a radial gradient, or you're going to want this vector coordinate system. And it's useful for things such as a circular progress bar or a time wipe, or a, you can even use it to drive something like a time where it's a clock rotating in a direction. In terms of our inputs, by default, it's going to be this right here. And we'll go ahead and we'll uncheck the swizzle and we'll hit apply to refresh. And our default outputs are going to be this right side here. Now you'll notice the left is the same. That's because I've duplicated these in actual node code. The input by default is basically taking our texture coordinates, multiplying it by two, so we have two times the coordinates and then subtracting one so we get this nice little gradient section where we have a red line and a green line where your yellow is overlapping. So this yellow is actually where the green and the red match up. We just have a horizontal green bar and a vertical red bar. Now if we were to unswizzle this, swizzling is basically when you switch the U and the V. So what will end up happening is if I check this to false, it is true by default, this is the false default right here. Oops, sorry. Plug in the false default <laughs> and play it back. This is what you're going to see is your difference. You're not going to see a difference with your other two. You're going to see a difference in your radial coordinates. Swizzling basically is going to flip our X and our Y. Our X is going to become the Y and the Y is going to become the X. So in this case, this green line is going to be vertical and the red line will be horizontal. So when we look at it here, red in the middle of the circle, green for our outside radius. And when we swizzle it or flip it, it's now red on the outside and green on the outside. So that's what the swizzle does. It's just going to switch your U and your V or your X and your Y for your input. By default, it's set to true. So that way you end up getting this result here. 
If you change it to false, like we've done down here, you'll get the opposite result. And as you notice for our converted angle and linear distances, our radials and our angulars, it's not really going to affect it at all because we're using different math. Now in terms of our output, as you can see here, we have our radial coordinate system, which is going to go X and Y. It's basically going to take this X or UV. So I guess, I think U is that way and V is down. X and Y, yeah, so V is down. So it's going to take your V and move. Your V is going to be your inside. It's going to be your inside value going outwards. And your Y value, your U value. I, I hate UV, X, Y. I, I understand why it's called UV. I just wish it was kept X, Y. It makes it simpler. So your green value here along your X or your U is going to drive from here all the way to here. It's going to be a circular value from full to not full. And your Y or your V, your vertical here, is going to be your interior to your out. That's how it's going to work on your radial coordinates. So the more red you'd have, for example, if we were to adjust our texture coordinate to something like 3 and hit apply, and then let me refresh everything, you're going to notice we now have a much larger, well actually let's, let's make it just one of the values. We'll do this, make it easier. There we go. So you'll notice our green bar here is smaller than our red bar, and you'll notice how it affects it here. We now have our red, which is much larger, focused off to this side, and our green, which is much smaller, it's now taking up this point here. And that's because we've gone ahead and we've actually swizzled these. When we flip them, you'll notice it's actually more appropriate. Our red bar is larger, and our green bar, green circular, is smaller. And it's useful for adjusting things and getting a different radial gradient. Let's switch this back and put things back to normal. Our second point is going to be our converted angle. This is our primary use. When people are using our vector to radial value, they're going to use it as our default settings here, and they're going to get back our, let me refresh this because I had it off. That's actually something if you notice that, let's take our, I think it was this one, right? I think it was our U. Let's refresh this. There we go. Let's make it something more like 10 and refresh. There we go. You'll notice when we do this, when we adjusted it, we're now adjusting, because keep in mind this one is here on the right hand side is our um, false. We're not swizzling. We're basically taking it as is. So our input values are going to look better. We're not adjusting these things. This is our adjusted. And this is our unadjusted here. So our adjusted is moving everything towards our left, as you can see here. And we're basically having a black and a white. And the more we were to adjust this, let's say we did 20, for example, and hit apply and refresh. Spacebar refreshes, by the way. I just learned that the other day, really handy. You'll notice it's moving. And of course, if we were to adjust this down to something like zero and refresh, you're going to end up with nothing because we have no split in the middle. And we get all green, all green, all green, all green, all green. So your texture coordinates determine where your center point is going to be on your vector converted angle. And it's useful if you want something maybe like a speedometer or a dash odometer and you want to have it where it's a fixed point and it's going left and right. It also changes your center point on your linear distance and the value on your linear distance in terms of how big your circle is going to be. For example, if we were to change our V tiling to something like 5 and refresh, you're going to notice it moves up. If we were to change this back to 2 and we were to change this to 5 and refresh it, you're going to notice it moves it left and right. So that's a way of adjusting your circular gradient in terms of where the position is. And the strength of the circular gradient is going to be driven based on the amount of data that's put into here, how, how strong it's going to be, how strong your color is going to be. That's pretty much going to wrap, wrap up our vector to radial value node. It's, it's an artist node. It's useful for converting, like it says, a vector, a V2 or a set of UVs into radial values. Radial values being a set of coordinates, which are here, basically your interior and outer 
interior and exterior coordinates, or an angle where you have here, you can see it's going a smooth fade from white to black, or a radial, I call it a radial gradient, but it calls a linear distance because it's going from the interior from a point to another point in a linear fashion. That's what our vector to radial value node is for. It's for giving you these artistic outputs you can use to drive other functions.